All right, um, thank you so much. Um, like you said, I'm Darcy Wolfman. I'm an abdominal imager. I do my clinical work at Hopkins in DC, which is a long story. Hopkins has hospitals down there. Um, but I'm here today actually representing the ACR uh, Human Resources Commission, of which I am a member, to talk about the job market update or our workforce survey. So a lot, most of the information I have in here is from our workforce survey that we do every year, and the information I'm sharing with you is from our most recent 2019 survey. So I do want to thank all the other members of the ACR Human Resources Commission, including Claire Bender and the ACR staff who helps put this together. So the ACR Workforce Survey, for those of you who don't know, are sent out to practice leaders. And this year, about 247 practices participated, representing about 16% of all radiologists. So there's no regional differences in participation. And we always look at the data reliability, because you can ask questions, but if it's not reliable data, it's not really worth a lot. So we always compare to the prior year, and actually we do some statistical analysis comparing previous years as well. In 2018 to 2019, there was no difference in the sample construction, response, no response, and deviation between expected and actual, which basically means that the results are reliable and predictable, which means we can use them to predict patterns in the future. So where do radiologists work? So I'm going to stop here for a second and just give you the punchline, because most of you are residents, and you're going to be looking for jobs. And really, I'm sure the question is, are there going to be jobs? Because the job market always goes up and down. You all are in a very good spot right now. It is a buyer's market. There are way, way more jobs out there than there are radiologists. So the bottom line to this whole thing is there are jobs, probably where you want them, and probably the type of jobs you want them, which is not always the case in our profession. The long-term outlook is actually very, very strong as well. I know there's a lot of AI discussion, and you talk to people in other professions, and they're you know, asking me, am I worried I'm going to lose my job to a computer at some point? And the very short answer is, not in the least. So you picked a good profession, and there are plenty of jobs. And now we'll go through some of the more nitty gritty. So about 49% of radiologists work in a private practice setting, and the rest are divided between the other choices, which included academic, hospital, multi-specialty clinic, corporate employee, which is an area that the ACR is watching very closely. The number of corporate radiology employees is growing um, quite dramatically in some parts of the country, and about 1% are in government at military and VA hospitals, and that holds steady. Gender distribution in radiology. This could be a three-hour session in and of itself. Um, as you can see by the breakdown of age, we have managed to increase the number of women in radiology slightly over the years. There's more in the under 35 group than the 56 to 65 group. However, when we compare these numbers to other medical specialties, this is actually one of the lowest, if not the lowest, percentage of women in any specialty, which is a whole nother discussion. But our data bared out that, you know, although we are making strides, that under 35 group still is only about 30% women. Full-time versus part-time. Most radiologists do work full-time. And then subspecialty trends in the current workforce. So these are people who are currently working, not what people are expecting to have jobs available for. So body imaging is the highest there. Generalist, which is a really interesting topic that we actually were just talking about at the HR Commission, is how to define a generalist. Um, and the, the truth is that if you go into private practice, even if you've done a fellowship, you're not going to be practicing exclusively in that subspecialty area. So if you do a chest fellowship and go into private practice, you might do 50% chest, but 50% is going to be neuro and body and peds and all the other things that we do. So we're working on how best to define that generalist uh, definition. And then you can see everything else going down there. There are a bunch of other um, subspecialties that are represent less than 2%, things like basic research, interventional neuroradiology, where there are subspecialists, but in very small numbers. 
So what about newly hired radiologists in 2018? So, you know, we asked who did you hire? And then we asked some questions about that. So for 2018, about 40% of newly hired radiologists had moved from another job, meaning they were not directly out of training, which meant 60% were first time hires after training. So that's who you guys will be. So those numbers are really strongly in your favor. These numbers do fluctuate over time. As the job market gets tighter, groups want to hire somebody with experience over somebody who's just out of fellowship. But when the job market is wide open, as you can see, 60% were first time hires. So again, you're in a very strong position. This I bring up for you guys to plan. So both for moved from another job, so experienced radiologists, as well as first time hires after training, less than 7% in both categories had no fellowship training. So a very small percentage. So it would behoove you to do a fellowship. If you were considering not doing a fellowship, I would strongly consider doing a fellowship at this point, that not having a fellowship unless you're planning on going to a very underserved area is probably not going to be a great thing. So now let's move into some of the hiring expectations in 2019 by subspecialty. So breast imaging, there are a lot of jobs for breast imaging neuroradiology, and you guys can read down here. Now, I put this up here just to kind of show you that there, there are jobs available in everything, and these are the questions we asked are, are you planning on hiring, and if so, are you hiring in, you know, what are you targeting, who are you trying to recruit? I put this up here, but I would urge you to not pick a fellowship based on this data, okay? There are a lot of breast imaging jobs. But if you decide to do a breast imaging fellowship, because there's a lot of jobs in breast imaging, please keep in mind you are going to be doing breast imaging for at least the next 30 years. And not only that, you're going to be the go-to person in your group when you start, because you just finished your fellowship training. So please pick something that you like. And right now with the job market, you're in a really good position that there are jobs. So you won't feel as much pressure that there might not be a job in the subspecialty that you like. But you should really just pick something that you enjoy, not based on market trends, and not based on what you didn't think you got good training on in residency. I actually hear that quite a bit. Well, we didn't have the best chest training, so I'm going to do a chest fellowship. Well, you better make sure you like pulmonary nodules and interstitial lung disease. <laughs> Because someone like me is going to be calling you if you join my group saying, what should I say about this? Because I can't remember that stuff for more than 10 minutes. So you know, keep in mind that even if you go into private practice, once you've done that fellowship and you might be reading other stuff, you're going to be the go-to person in that group because you've had that extra training. And when you come out of fellowship training, you're, you've learned everything the most recent, right? You're the most up-to-date person in the group. We'll move on to percentage hiring trends by region. So the South has the most plans to hire. So the dark bar is hired in 2018, and the lighter bar is plans to hire in 2019. So that's actually what they did hire and then what they're planning to hire. And this follows the job market. The West and New England tend to have the least number of jobs, the most people live there, a lot of people want to live there. The South, more jobs are available. Again, this is really only important if you're truly flexible in where you can go and where you want to go. You know, the South is definitely going to have more jobs. If you hate the heat and the humidity, I strongly suggest you do not move to Louisiana, because I lived there for four years and it's really hot and humid. You won't like it. So you've got to make sure that you're happy with your geographic choice as well. So hiring expectations by practice type. So this follows the distribution of radiology practices, right? Over half are private practice, and then it tails off. With one notable exception, you'll notice that the number of hires in academic universities was quite high. And there's a big need in 
academic uh, universities for radiologists. And this is a, a trend that we have seen before in radiology. And generally speaking, when the jobs outnumber the number of radiologists, academics ends up having a spike in need. And that's because when the job market's really tight, people who may like academics, may not, start working in academic centers because the job market's tight. And then as it loosens up and there's a private practice job, they might enjoy more, they move out into those jobs. So this is something that we see happening. The other kind of interesting thing on this is the plan to hire in this corporate employee. And we're going to talk about this in a second with the changes in radiology. But this idea of being a corporate employee or a corporation owning radiology practice, radiology centers, and hiring a radiologist so that you're a corporate employee is increasing all over the country. And that group in particular is really making a push to expand and hire a lot of radiologists. So what changes are we seeing in radiology? So 41% of practices reported discussing or having a practice model change in the past three years. That's a really big number when you look at it. I actually had to confirm that with our statistician because I thought that's, that's a lot of practices that have either changed their practice model or have been seriously discussing it. And this are things like merging with another group, joining an alliance, such as Rad Partners, very large alliance you might have heard of, selling their private practice groups to corporations, or becoming a health system employee. Where I practice in Washington, DC, most of the radiology groups are now multi-specialty clinic type groups and health system employee type groups rather than private practice. And this really reflects a larger change in medicine that these multi-health systems are taking over areas and incorporating multi-specialties within them. So this is kind of a microcosm in radiology is reflecting what's going on in the larger world of medicine. This occurred in 51% of Midwest practices, but only 25% of Mid-Atlantic practices. My personal bias here in what we talked about in the HR Commission and kind of looking and analyzing this data is that some of this may actually reflect changes that have already taken place in the Mid-Atlantic. Um, again, as someone who lives in DC, these changes have kind of already taken place. There isn't much room for practice models to change more because they changed about five to seven years ago. The bottom line here, though, is that things are changing but things are always changing. Over the course of your radiology career, things are gonna go up and down. And I remember being told that as a resident. When I, was, when I was a resident, the job market was like it is now. By the time I finished my fellowship, the jobs had started diminishing. By the time I was in practice about four years, when you looked at the ads, I believe he showed there were like 247 ads on the RSNA website. You used to go on the RSNA website and there'd be like 10. Like, oh God, <laughs> where am I gonna work? And that's gonna happen. You know, it happens in every profession. There's gonna be peaks and valleys. So the most important thing is to just remember that change is inevitable. So again, the job market is strong. Jobs are available. You're in a really good position. Fellowship training is absolutely worth it and the data supports that, you will put yourself in a better position for a job. Um, again, breast imaging is the most recruited right now, but I would really, if you don't like breast imaging, it's gonna be a really long career. <laughs> so don't do it unless you like it. And then change is inevitable. 